What's inside the orange box? On October 10th, 2007, Valve released a bundle called the Orange Box that included Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, Half-Life 2 Episode 2, Portal, and Team Fortress 2. The bundle brought great success to the company, since it was a very viable choice and could be picked up by pretty much everybody, due to it being available on Xbox 360, Windows, Mac OS, and PlayStation 3, and supporting Xbox's backwards compatibility feature, allowing it to also be played on Xbox One devices, though with some latency. The Orange Box was the first bundle of games that Valve was able to get on the console, due to it being published on the consoles by Electronic Arts. Despite EA being probably one of the most shittiest companies in existence, they did help Valve get this amazing bundle onto store shelves, especially for console. As someone who doesn't actually own the Orange Box bundle on Steam or for any consoles, I do own each game in the Orange Box already, so I'm able to play all of them without even purchasing the bundle. I already stated all of the games included in the Orange Box, but the main one that everyone was happy about was Half-Life 2 Episode and Episode 2 which were the two episodes available for Half-Life 2 that were both canon to the original story. Sadly on console, Team Fortress 2, which came with the orange box, is no longer even close to being viable enough to play consistently. This is because of how unkept the servers are for the orange box version of Team Fortress 2 for consoles, being unsupported of Valve, nor updated since 2008. The orange box versions still have a small player base, mostly on Xbox 360, but it's still not enough to keep it known as an active game. Most of the orange box has fallen into obscurity over the years, but still, some people still play the games within it, mostly on console since it includes some of Valve's best titles. But let's take a deep dive into the orange box, its production, its games, and how it sat well with the community. With the large success that was Half-Life 2, Valve began production on Episode 1. Episode 1 would also be canon to the Half-Life 2 storyline, as well as Episode 2 that would come out a year later. Many fans were hyper for this game, though the game wasn't originally named Episode 1, it was dubbed a different name, though I wasn't able to find it in the research. Episode 1 after being released was extremely fun and a great game, though people were still skeptical about it and wanted an Episode 2 to fulfill the ending to it. Then, Episode 2 came out, which also continued the story to the Half-Life 2 universe. Episode 2 as well was really fun, as well as that stupid FUCKING GNOME LEVEL! Now that I got the Half-Lifes out of the way, let's get started on my favorite game in the orange box, Portal. Portal is a fantastic game, and everything that happens in the game builds upon itself. With amazing characters, amazing dialogue, amazing quality, amazing voice acting, it's just a great game in general. Portal was one of the many games that I first understood. I played through the whole thing in one night and it's astonishing on how amazing this game is. Portal's production started with a few college students who created a game called Narbacular Drop, which is a puzzle game when a princess had to escape dungeons guarded by a demon using portals. Valve took notice of this game and hired the developers to, to revision the game onto the Source Engine, before creating Portal. The early stages of the game were made just trying to test out the Source Engine and how to make things, since if you can tell if you play the beta, you can tell that Portal 1 is pretty much everything of Half-Life 2's access. Hell, it still is, since the game was made on such a small budget, since Valve didn't expect the game to blow up as much as it did. Portal's story takes you through the eyes of Shell, a test subject in Aperture Science Computer Aided Enrichment Center. Throughout the game, you're tested by a giant robot named GLaDOS, who basically runs the whole facility, and will crack extremely bad jokes at you sometimes. But once you reach the later chambers, you start to notice things are getting a little suspicious. On Chamber 17, which you have to fight the sentry guns, you'll notice that a wall is taken out of the other wall, exposing a room where it appears that someone was locked in there, with the writings, the cake is the lie, all over the wall. Then you remember that GLaDOS started to promise you cake as a return after you complete the tests. Which, after you start adding up the numbers, you notice that GLaDOS isn't so nice, because after the level, she says this. Well done, Android. The Enrichment Center once again reminds you that Android Hell is a real place where you will be sent at the first sign of defiance. Android Hell? What? What is that? Is that where I'm going? Will there be cake? What's happening? Who is GLaDOS? That was me right after finishing that level. Confused, you continue the test chambers until you get onto chamber 18, where the chamber ends very abruptly. You'll be brought to a fire room where GLaDOS tries to incinerate you. Though escaping, GLaDOS will stutter over her words, intending that that was on purpose. 
and that it was just a joke. Yeah, good joke, GLaDOS. After exploring and escaping the back rooms of the facility, you'll make it to GLaDOS's chamber, where you'll have to kill her using a rocket turret that'll shoot rockets at her by a certain placement of your portal gun. After that, you'll be brought up to the surface of the facility, look out into the distance, and then get pulled back in. And that concludes the portal section of this. Team Fortress 2 was a sequel to the very, very popular Quake command from 1999, Team Fortress Classic. Team Fortress 2 was an orange box exclusive, meaning that you had to actually own the orange box in order to play this game. Though after a while, it went to Steam, and you can buy it for $20. Then after another little while, it went free to play in 2011. Team Fortress 2 is a genius video game with genius movement and mechanics via it being on the Source engine. The map design is so amazing that it's been given so much criticism, but constructive. There are good maps like Upward and Harvest, but there are some bad maps like Badwater. Bad work. I despise me hating bad water. Bad water is a perfect example of a bad Team Fortress 2 map, no matter what you say. Team Fortress 2 got extremely popular due to its pretty funny, like, jokes that the game will pull sometimes. Also having comedic weapons, like an actual jar of piss. Overall, Team Fortress 2 was a great game and was loved by many people on Orange Box's release. Well, this concludes the retrospective of the Orange Box. Now, I'm recording this in post-production, so... Let me just tell you how long it took to make this video. It took me two months. It took me two months of script writing, editing, me saying the wrong thing every time. It took two months, but after a long two months, it's finally done.